All right, so there you have it, folks. Now you have total range of adjustment on these screws. Uh, so this will allow us to get the saw tuned in just perfectly. friends, it's Wayne Polson coming to you from SM Heartland and here at Heartwood. I'm in the basement today and had a great week so far. My daughter is up from Florida with her son, my grandson, George, and we've been uh, just having a great old time. Uh, George has helped me move some trees. He's helped me move some logs. Um, I taught him a little bit of the basics on how to operate the tractor and the grapple, and he took off with it. He just ran with it. I mean, he just didn't stop. He kept it right on going like shazam, like poo. And uh, yeah, surprised the tar out of me. He did great. Um, I mean, I didn't have to lift a finger. And then we were gonna split some wood. We were gonna record some of that, but then uh, couldn't get the log splitter started. That happened yesterday. I thought maybe it was a bad gas problem. So we cleaned the carburetor and did all that kind of stuff. No go. We checked the spark plug, no spark. So we thought it was a bad plug perhaps. Bought a new plug for it today. Put the plug in, same thing, no spark. Couldn't figure it out, folks. We were, we were scrambling. Finally, I thought, well, maybe it's the thing that generates the spark, the little magneto thing, the little coil that has the magnet on the flywheel that excites it and makes it spark. Um, well, we pulled the engine off of the log splitter, brought it down here in the basement. We examined it and re-examined it. We tested the little coil and it worked just fine. We did, it worked just fine. Couldn't figure it out. Put it all back together, it wouldn't run. We finally disconnected the kill switch and it ran. But then I couldn't shut it off. It was running down here on the table and everybody was scrambling around like chickens with their heads cut off. We couldn't shut the thing down for darn sake. So there we were. I had to pull the plug off the plug wire, the other way around, plug wire off the plug and uh, that shut it down. So that was a clue. There was something in the kill circuit that was messing things up. So we traced it all down to a oil level sensor in this Kohler CH440 engine. It's a Command Pro series. They have an oil level sensor that can kill the engine if the oil level gets too low. Well, the oil capacity was full. We were full. We were able to narrow it down to a little module. This, which I have now destroyed. I, I was just trying to do some destructive examination here, trying to figure out what makes this thing tick. It's some kind of electronic circuit. I didn't pull it fully apart, but it doesn't work nonetheless. So I bypassed that for now. I'll order a new module. We'll get this thing back to 100%, but in the meantime, we can run it the way it is because I know there's oil in the thing, so we're not gonna damage anything. So are you tracking with me, folks? Do you, you follow my drift there? You get it, you got it? So I don't even know what I started this video for. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here, this. You see these right here? By the way, this is my new CS355T, my top handle saw that's replacing my CS2511T. Not really replacing it, just um, coming and standing in for a moment, if you will. I'm gonna rebuild that CS2511T. Michael Snow, you know that. Michael Snow's gonna help me get parts for it. And uh, we're gonna rebuild it. We're gonna resurrect it from the DEAD, the dead. Now, so what I want to talk about, though, is this is a virgin saw right now, stock. Nothing has been changed on this saw since I bought it. I'm going to first of all start off by pulling off the limiters right here, these limiters. You see these right there? Can you see those? Those limiter caps? Because what they do is they limit things. And by limit, I mean they restrict things. By restrict, I mean they don't allow you to adjust beyond certain ranges, if you know what I'm saying. So your ability to tune the saw is limited by these limiter caps, those little orange caps in there. So today I'm gonna to pull those off. That's gonna be the first modification I do so that I can tune this saw the way I want it to run. That's, there should be no law against that. I mean, I should be able to do that, correct? It's my saw, I own it. So without further ado, let's get to it, shall we? 
All right, folks, so I realize you guys probably couldn't see those limiter caps, but those of you who own these saws, you guys know what they look like. There they are, those orange round plastic caps there below the low and the high jet labels there. Uh, we're going to remove those. You can do this without removing the carburetor. Those holes are big enough to get the uh, limiter caps out of there. But for clarity's sake, for demonstrating how these things are actually held in place and how to remove them, I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor. So let's get that done right now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the air cleaner off. Set all that aside. And then I'm going to loosen these two screws right here. Pull them out. There we go. Those two bolts actually hold the carburetor to the intake manifold. All right, so now I am just going to go ahead and pop this rear. throttle linkage off like that. Now there is an idle screw right here. This is your idle screw. You'll have to pull that out of the side like this and then you can easily disconnect the choke linkage here. Now you don't have to take anything else apart. I'm going to turn this around like that and uh, before we get started I'm going to go ahead and mount this in a little vise. So I'm going to stop this right here. We'll be back in a moment. All right, so here's a straight on view of the limiter caps. Now, what I want you to look at here is there's a little square cut out here and a little square cut out here. This square cut out here is the clearance gap to pull this cap out. There's a little tab on the perimeter of this cap that will fit right through that little opening there when it's lined up. The way that this limiter limits is right now it's at the fully counterclockwise limit. If I turn this, that's all the farther I can turn it right there. About less than 90 degrees. Okay, so if I turn this beyond the fully if I turn this clockwise, that little orange tab is no longer in the window here. So if I pull on this cap right now, it's stuck behind this little flange here, and that cap will not come out. So you have to align the tab with the hole right there. All right, the same thing is true for this limiter cap. For this one here, Right here's the little clearance hole. And this one's limited also to about 90 degrees or so of, of movement. So I'm limited. So I've got both of these turns so that these little protrusions are lined up in these clearance, little clearance holes right here. Now we can begin removing them. Okay, so I've just changed the carburetor angle a little bit here so that I can demonstrate how this is removed. I've got a little uh, wood screw here. As you can see, you can use like a drywall screw or something like that that has a sharp point like that. And I'm going to go ahead and thread this into the center opening of that cap. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drive this in. You got to be careful because when you're tightening this, as you're tightening it, you could actually turn the cap to where that little tab is now behind the flange, so you won't be able to get it out of there. So I would recommend that you make sure that this is fully counterclockwise or aligned in that clearance hole there. And then start your screw and just hold some pressure against that tab or against that cap. See how it did that? It turned there, so we don't want that to happen. Once that happens, you'll have to turn it back.
like that. Now, once you have enough thread grip in that cap, you can go ahead and start to pull it up straight up. And there it is, it pops out just like that. And see, there's that little tab I was talking about right there. See that? And you notice there's a tab on the bottom as well that comes out through this little clearance hole down here. So when we pull this one out, you'll see there's one way down in here as well. Okay, I was able to pull that one up or um, turn that one back without having to loosen the screw. So I'm gonna pull up, kind of wiggle a little bit. That'll help, and there it is. Coming out right there. Notice, can you see it on this back side? Right there, the other one came out of that hole there. All right, so there you have it, folks. Now you have total range of adjustment on these screws. Uh, so this will allow us to get the saw tuned in just perfectly. I plan on doing a muffler mod on this and um, that probably is the only modification I'm gonna do, honestly. But after I do the muffler, muffler mod, I will have to retune the saw. So I needed to have these limiter caps removed. So there you are. Well, okay, friends. Boy, that was a riot, wasn't it? We had a blast with that saw. Yeah, it was a ride for somebody, I'm sure. Listen, hey, I wanna give a little shout out to Tammy Duda, one of my subscribers. Uh, she made a comment, uh, I think on the last video or maybe the video before that uh, she's been in the hospital since St. Patrick's Day. So Tammy, here's a shout out to you. I hope you recover uh, soon, get out of that place, get back home to where you belong and uh, live the rest of your life, okay? Will you do that for me? All right, folks, just remember Tammy and uh, I hope you all are doing fine. Everyone else, I hope you're doing great. Uh, all 1,100 and I don't know, 80 some of you folks, thank you so much, all of you, for being a part of this channel. You folks are the coolest people and I mean that. Um, all of you that leave the comments, you, your comments are kind, your comments are uplifting, your comments are gently critical and I appreciate it so much. Folks, let's continue that. Be kind in your neighborhoods, be kind in your families, be kind to yourself. I'll see you in another video.